previously on the vlog. My adventures took me to Malham to complete a well-trodden circuit through the Yorkshire Dales. I took you along with me to see the magical woodland of Janet's Foss waterfall before continuing on to what I'm describing as one of the UK's most impressive natural landforms at Gordale Scar. Check this out. As always, the route was described in detail for you to follow along and we finished up with me standing like an ant at the bottom of a deep gorge, needing to find my way out. I'm, I'm in awe of this place. I really am. And that's where we pick things up now, down on the ground at Gordale Scar. Welcome back guys to another exploration vlog. This is part two of a two part series. If you missed part one and you're keen to see the route, a whole lot more aerial shots of Gordale Scar, or hear about how it was formed, follow the link on screen now. But if you're here to continue, welcome to the start of part two. From Gordale Scar to Malham Cove. Gordale Scar is a natural marvel. A deep gorge cut out of the limestone by erosion caused by meltwater of glaciers long since melted. Now, the only evidence left is Gordale Beck and its waterfall, which in this day and age are largely fed by groundwater flow and precipitation as opposed to the ice and the meltwater that preceded it many, many years ago. Well, I've pulled myself together a little bit now. I've just taken a few photos and now I think I'm going to have a close look at this waterfall and hopefully climb up it and continue on my route. Let's see how I get on. Some climbers. <laughs> this place just gets better and better. Lots of people here already. So I've taken a look at it and I've decided I'm going to go for it. Looks a fairly simple climb in the end, but I'm going to get the old first person head cam on again, wide angle lens, and uh, see how it comes out. I think what I find the most fascinating is that I'm stood here now with all this in front of me. But all those years ago, it did not look like this at all. The landscape would have been frozen during the ice ages. There would have been glaciers here. And even without those glaciers, the topography would have been so much different. And it's, it, I just find it hard to comprehend, but I'm amazed by it at the same time. I just but this scenery was created by the glaciers and by water, ultimately. Power of nature. This is what I'm climbing. So just up the side of the waterfall. And you can see the route pick it up around there. I think in the winter or the autumn when there's more water coming down here, this is a lot more tricky. And I know it's blocked off pretty much because of the water. So this is the time to climb it if you need to. Wow.
jump here. That's the route up. Jesus. Got to press right against this wall. I've opted not to jump. <laughs> There we go. Shapes of the rocks. I have to talk quite loudly because of the wind. We'll just look at where I've just come from. Quite an easy climb in the end, but uh, just a very tricky part where you've got to kind of press yourself against the rock face, use both of your hands and shimmy along. But uh, it was fun. You can tell we're losing the sun a little bit now. But just look where this water comes from in this upper part of the gorge here. Right in the center of your screen there, there's a hole in the rock. Just a gaping hole in the cliff and another waterfall. That's where we're going. Yet another crack of doom. Let's get me out of here. And of my route today, this section here pretty much forms the only real bit of ascent. Obviously there's a climb there, that not all abilities will be able to achieve. There is a way to get to Malham Cove by turning back on yourself and getting another path from Gordale Lane. So just make a note of that. Ah, oh, there is a bit of colour in the sky after all. So, top of Gordale Scar, and much like King Louis, I reached the top and I had to stop because that's what I've just climbed up. Very steep, but a great view of that cliff right in the middle of the gorge there. But let's be honest, this whole place is fantastic. And now you've got this tiered, kind of almost theatre-like rock formation where the limestone still protrudes out from beyond the grass. Whilst I'm having a minute, I thought I'd better introduce our next stop of the day. Um, it kind of combines two, really. So you've got the iconic limestone pavement, which features in various areas of North Yorkshire and even in the lakes but I believe I seen from one of the Harry Potter films, I think the first Deathly Hallows was shot on the limestone pavement. So that might be interesting for some of you. And it stands above Malham Cove, which is the final checkpoint of the day. And again, I've seen it in the distance earlier from the car and it looks impressive. And if it's anything like that there, I think we're gonna be in for a treat. So a few more minutes and I'll get on my way. That's the day's ascent done. Whew. 
And the gorge continues in that direction. You want to follow the flattened grassy path from the stile at the top of Gordale Scar. Dead tree on the right here. Mini landmark, bit of a waypoint. To the left you get the occasional preview of limestone pavement with sporadic outcrops of flattened blocks. But ultimately, you'll follow this path for about a mile until you reach a stone wall running alongside Tarn Road. Here we are, the little stile. Over the stile, you must follow the road to the right for about 500 yards until you reach a crossroads. At this point, turn left and have an easy and flat one mile walk along the road. I've always seen the Yorkshire Dales as kind of just like rolling hills of grass and being quite boring. But if you dig a little deeper and find those features of the landscape, then there's some amazing things to be seen. And there's countless of these limestone outcrops with the whole tiered system that we saw earlier at Gordale Scar dotted around the hillsides. At this point, you have that option of visiting Malham Tarn, but at this stage, I hadn't got the time or much daylight left, and I hadn't planned it into the route to begin with. So following the sign, I headed off road through various fields and over several stiles on the route to Malham Cove. Oh, fantastic. There's a cow guarding the path. Jesus Christ, he's a big thing. It's still well signposted along the way, and it's a pretty straight route. So enjoy the stroll, take in the scenery, and prepare for one hell of a sight when you reach the cove. Bit of a trudge this section of the walk. Not very eventful, but it's just about getting to the next landmark that I've intended to show you today. And I don't think I'm too far off, but uh, sun's still probably a few hours from going down fully as long as I've got good enough light to take some footage when I get there. But I'm pretty tired now. Feet are tired. It's been a long day. It takes a lot out of you focusing on filming certain shots. You've got this to do, you've got that to do. And I think the mental aspect of vlogging really uh, kind of takes its toll as the day wears on as well, as the physical, obviously the hiking and the climbing. So. Yeah, I'll be glad to get back to the car, to be honest, and have a few drinks. But for now, I've just got to get to Malham Cove and show you the, the sights over there. Before we arrive, here's a brief summary of what you're about to see here above the cove. From a distance, the limestone pavement is a very flat looking landscape, but it's made up of many different slabs or segments known as clints. The gaps that separate those clints are called grikes, providing shelter and growing conditions for wildlife, flora and fauna. The pavements were ultimately exposed by the scraping and scouring of glaciers that moved over the surface, but since then water movement has widened the gaps and grikes through erosion to form this random pattern that you see here today. Well guys, what a day it's been as we approach the final checkpoint on our tour of the Malham Circuit. Malham Cove is just ahead of me over the edge here and I'm going to take you there. Come on. Pretty much right on it now, given the uh, positioning on the map. And this sign's actually worth seeing. So we know that Malham Cove is, as, as I suspected, over to my right here. To the left, you've got Gordale. Now, this is where the path comes out. If you were to turn back on yourself from Gordale Scar, instead of climbing it like I did, you'd come back up to this sign eventually and continue the tour that way without having to do the climbing. But now then, let's have a look at this cove. Come my child, you're ever bound to me. The road ahead. Since we 
And just wait until you see this view. It's actually unreal. You're going to be impressed. Malam Cove, guys. Absolutely blown away. <laughs> Unreal. For a first visit, how have I not been here sooner? Absolutely unreal. And it curves round from over here. And you can, it's just, a, I'm right on the edge of the cliff here. It's such a sheer drop and it curves round all the way over there. Obviously you've got your limestone pavement just over here. You can see your clints and your grikes where the water's cut down and separated all those kind of building blocks over there just to put together that limestone pavement. And we're gonna have a walk across it in just a little minute. But just taking this in now, it's a long way down. But if you think again, back to the ice ages, I asked you to use your imagination back there at Gordale Scar, use it again now. Just imagine the land here is all frozen. Before the glaciers have really gouged out this limestone pavement here, the meltwater is just starting to run out and it's cascading over here like a great waterfall. Just think in the terms of like Niagara Falls, the way that curves around and all that water, tons of it just cascading over. Imagine if this was like that. Water pouring over the edge. Totally different from the way you see it now, but equally as beautiful, no doubt. Man. Of course, once all the ice had melted, 
the water would have done exactly what it's doing right now, moving through the ground as groundwater. But at the point when the ground was too frozen, it could very well have just been cascading over the edge, like I've just said. As I walk across this limestone pavement now, just imagine it as a waterfall. Doesn't even bear thinking about, really. Incredible. And now we turn our attention to the limestone pavement. We head through this gap in the wall. We have to cross the limestone pavement in order to get to our stairway down into the cove. So let's get to it. Bear in mind, these rocks would be quite slippy in the rain. They might be a bit slippy and shiny now on a dry day. So take care when crossing the pavement. Look at this. So that's the limestone pavement. Pretty cool, eh? And now I'm just making my way across it, just the final piece here, to find the steps down that someone has kindly put in. The glaciers didn't go that far. The sun's about to set over the hill there. Probably got another hour and a half of daylight left though, I suspect, before it really goes dark blue. But dusk's my favourite time of day, so I'll enjoy the walk along the path all the way back to Malham. It's a very simple path from here. And at the end of the pavement here, we have the steps down people laughing over there, ruining my peace and quiet. And I might just pause here to have one look back at the cove from this perspective. That's the way back, but I'm just going to have a quick look at the foot of the cove over here. Might as well complete the thing. It's almost like these gardens have been planted. Obviously the paths have been laid by the National Trust. But there's something very kind of, almost like Japanese gardens about the place. Look at this rock face here. It's like the kind of thing you'd see in Yosemite. It's so flat in places. It reminds me of the flat face of Half Dome. Just keep in mind, water did this. Water caused this.
All right, guys, that's a wrap. One kilometer hike back to the car along a nice, easy path. But if you've enjoyed the video today, I hope you'll consider subscribing. And please check out my previous video, the sharp edge of Blencathra, over in the Lake District. I took on the entire 250 meter sharp edge ridge with a head cam on and filmed it entirely in first person to really give you that perspective of what the ridge is like. It's a feature length vlog and it's a video I'm very proud of. So I'll put a link at the end of this video. So if you could head over there and give that a watch, I hope you'll like it. But adding to that, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I'll leave links to my other social accounts in the description below. I do have a lot of behind the scenes stuff to post. I take a lot of photographs on these adventures and I post them all on my Instagram and my Vero accounts. So hopefully you come over and say hello over there. Cows. But until next time guys, go watch all my other videos, leave me a load of positive comments and I'll see you out there. Is he following me? There's a fly crying over the lens. Hehehe. <laughs>